Five years ago, after centuries of domination in the brutal Arcadian Empire, the empire was completely overthrown in a coup d'etat. The person with the greatest merit in this group was a mysterious black dragon knight. Until now, people still spread the legend of that black dragon knight and often call him the black hero. Back in the present, Lux is chasing a cat to help a girl get her bag back. Lux has fallen from the roof of a building. Fortunately, it is the hot bath of the Royal Knights Academy and Lux accidentally sees Leisha's hot body. She is the current princess of the empire. Of course, Lux was then sent to prison as a pervert. After explaining it clearly to the headmistress, in addition, the headmistress was the one who called Lux here to work so everything was reconciled. The headmistress called Lux here to work because he was one of the rare male dragon knights left after the coup d'etat. But letting a boy work in an all-girls school is a difficult thing to accept. Princess Leisha is, of course, the first to object to this. Leisha challenges Lux to a duel. If he wins, he can stay and work at the academy. If he loses, then he has to go to jail as a criminal. Lux's sister, Airi, is also studying at this academy. She says that if he goes to jail, she won't have enough money to get a pardon from the royal family. The duel takes place in the presence of all the female students in the academy. They in turn summon their machine dragons. Lux's machine dragon is just a mid-range full body weapon, while Leisha's machine dragon is the divine machine dragon called Tiamat. It is far superior to ordinary machine dragons. However, Lux can still dodge most of Leisha's attacks. But after blocking Leisha's attack, Lux's sword is broken. Right after that, Leisha takes out Tiamat's ultimate weapon and shoots at Lux. The attack is so powerful that it breaks the barrier around the arena. Lux continues to dodge Leisha's attack. True to his old fighting style, he buys time to get a draw, so he is called the undefeated underdog. In order to defeat Lux, Leisha decides to use Tiamat's divine skill. Divine skill is a unique technique that only divine machine dragons can use. And Leisha's divine skill is to control gravity, making Lux unable to move. Just as Leisha is about to finish off Lux, her Tiamat suddenly becomes out of control. The reason was that she used the ultimate weapon and divine skill at the same time. Lux advises her to quickly remove her divine machine dragon. At this moment, a deafening flute sounds. The protective barrier once again disappears, and in the sky appears an abyss a monster that usually only appears in ancient ruins. It shoots four wing bones, which look like four flaming red blades, easily piercing the Dragon Knight's barrier. Then it rushes to Leisha's position. With the current state, Leisha certainly won't be able to dodge it. Luckily, Lux saves her in time with his protective shield. Lux tells Leisha that with this machine's dragon's attack power, he won't be able to destroy this abyss, so he will give Leisha a chance to shoot it. While fighting the abyss, Lux intentionally leaves a loophole to lure the abyss to attack him. It is also the right time for Leisha to attack it. Through this incident, Lux won Leisha's recognition. Leisha also tells Lux that he will enter the academy as a student, not to work like the headmistress originally requested. Lux is the academy's only male student and a former prince, so he receives a lot of attention from the female students. In class, he also meets a childhood friend named Philophy. The closeness of the two makes Princess Leisha feel a little jealous. While Lux is surrounded by female classmates, a girl named Crucifer saves the day for him, and Crucifer asks Lux about the Black Hero because she has seen Lux have two swords used to summon the Machine Dragon. Among them was a black sword that he had never used before. Perhaps the distinctive color of the sword had drawn Crucifer's attention. The Academy receives word that a large abyss has appeared in the southwestern ruins. The Academy's Knights are ordered to assist the New Empire's Dragon Knights to defeat that monster. The possibility that there might be an army of monsters there, since Luke has not yet become a member of the Knight Order, he can't participate in the task this time. Lux finds the recent appearance of the Abyss a bit strange. He felt like someone was controlling the monsters with the sound of the flute. On the battlefield, the large Abyss self-destructs and creates many small Abysses. And these Abysses are controlled by the Captain of the New Empire's Knights. It turns out that the captain is a member of the old empire named Ragreed. He has infiltrated the new empire to wait for the opportunity to restore his empire. The academy's knight order can't hold the abyss army and is forced to retreat. Leisha guesses that the flute in Ragreed's hand is the key to controlling the abysses. At this time, the rebel army of the old empire has also arrived, and the situation is even more unfavorable. 
After receiving news on the battlefield, Lux immediately puts on his machine dragon suit and flies to the battlefield. At the time, Regreed is about to destroy Leisha. Lux also arrived in time to stop Regreed. However, Lux's machine dragon is too weak to withstand the power of Regreed. With no other choice, Lux is forced to use his remaining black sword to summon a black machine dragon named Bahama. Bahama is a divine machine dragon. Its entire body is black, reminiscent of the legendary Black Knight five years ago. With Bahamut's superior strength, Lux easily defeats all enemies. Regreed sees the black machine dragon. He guesses Lux's true identity. He says, you are the former prince of the old empire. Why are you pointing your sword at us? Lux doesn't answer the captain and coldly knocks him down. In order to thank Lux, Leisha and the other students prepared a welcome party for him to join the Night Order. During the party, the headmistress says she prepared a game specifically for Lux. The headmistress gives him a piece of paper and says it is a contract to own Lux within one week if anyone catches him within the time limit. So he is chased by all female students. Lux decides to find a room to hide in until the time runs out. However, a group of schoolgirls walks in and changes to prepare to check their machine dragon and Crucifer walks over to the bookshelf and sees Lux hiding there. She doesn't expose him and goes back to tell the others that she will be off work today. After everyone left, Crucifer changed the clock time making Lux think the game time was over so Crucifer gets Lux's one week contract. She wants Lux to pretend to be her boyfriend for a week. Crucifer is the daughter of an earl of another country. She transfers to the new empire to find a noble to marry at the request of her clan. In the next few days, a butler from her clan will come to check if she has found the fiancé. The butler will then report back to her family. While they are meeting with the butler, a man named Bowseride lifts Crucifer's chin and calls her his future wife. It turns out that Bowseride belongs to the Kreutzer family, one of the four royal families of the new empire. He mocks Lux's status as a former prince and wants to challenge Lux to a duel to have Crucifer. Crucifer makes a 2v2 match for this marriage. Crucifer and Lux will fight Bowseride and the butler. The match will take place three days later. At this time in the hall, four royal families are summoned to discuss a Ragnarok that is slowly escaping its petrified state in the Empire's territory. Ragnarok is a kind of monster with special powers that only appear in each ruin. The royal family and the four great families are not sure if the strength of the new empire can stand against Ragnarok. So Balzaride's father suggests that his son is in charge of the exploration of the ruin to find weapons so that they can fight Ragnarok in the future. The Knight Academy is assigned the quest to explore the ruins this time. The headmistress gives Lux the flute they obtained after Lux defeated Regreed. The next morning everyone gathers, Balzaride appears and brags about his and his family's strength. Much to everyone's displeasure, just outside of the ruin they encounter a Diablo, an extremely powerful monster that can wipe out a small city. Diablo is so fast that anyone can't hit it. Now Crucifer's divine machine dragon's predictive power of the enemy's position comes into play. She successfully freezes part of Diablo's body, causing it to temporarily slow down. Bazaride takes this opportunity to shoot two beams of light that hit Diablo, injuring it. He then approaches and places his hand on Crucifer's armor and turns to provoke Lux. Crucifer discovers that she can no longer use her power to predict the location, and Bowseride now seems to have the ability to predict the location like Crucifer's. He throws an axe at Diablo while it is moving at an extremely fast speed. Diablo gets hit and explodes. While everyone is trying to prevent the aftershocks of the explosion, the ruin suddenly glows. Then Crucifer and Lux, who were nearby, are sucked into the ruin. After they were sucked inside the ruin, they continued to explore the ruin. When Lux enters the shrine, he takes out the flute to see if this is really the key to the ruin. Suddenly a mechanical sound is heard, saying that it has detected the presence of the key and it is in the process of unlocking it. While Lux doesn't understand what is going on, Crucifer speaks up and says that she is not from this world but the last survivor of the ruin, much to Lux's surprise. The shrine shakes as if it is about to collapse. Lux hurriedly pulls Crucifer and runs into the newly opened door. The exit is closed and inside are many neatly placed boxes. Crucifer tells Lux she was found inside a box like this by her current adoptive father. Before that, when she didn't know the truth, she always found it difficult to understand why family members like parents and siblings always kept their distance from her. 
Lux tells Crucifer to forget about that country and her family because there are a lot of people here who really care about her. Crucifer suddenly bursts out laughing and teases Lux, advising him not to trust girls' complaints too much. The stone room suddenly shakes slightly and Leisha appears to save them. After returning to the academy, Crucifer gives Lux a cup of tea with sleeping pills in it. She doesn't want Lux to get caught up in her troubles. She goes to the duel site alone. Bowseride also decided to fight her alone. Bowseride's divine machine dragon has the ability to temporarily steal the opponent's divine skill. After Bowseride touched Crucifer's armor, Bowseride stole her divine skill. He has thoroughly researched the skills of her armor while she has no information about him. After being easily defeated, Crucifer realizes all of Bowseride's plot. His purpose is to find a key in human form, which can unlock the weapon of the relic. A sword suddenly rushes towards Bowseride's position while he is babbling incessantly. Somehow, Lux is at the duel site in Bahamut armor. During the duel, Bowseride suddenly turns his gun and shoots at Crucifer, forcing Lux to rush to block his attack. Bowseride takes this opportunity to steal Lux's divine skill. Having the divine skill stolen causes Lux to be overwhelmed. When Bowseride thinks that the victory is firmly in his hand, Lux suddenly speaks a moral sentence and the background music plays. Lux intentionally causes Bahamut to lose control and then stores energy to unleash a single attack that knocks out Bowseride. This is a dangerous skill. It is like a double-edged sword for the user. The next day, Lux and Crucifer go to see the butler. The butler tells Lux that his strength has been proven through defeating Bowseride, so the head of the family decides that Lux will be Crucifer's fiance. In recent days on the campus of the academy, there has been a pervert who often harasses female students. Lux is forced to disguise himself as a girl as bait. While Lux is in the form of a girl, he accidentally meets Celestia, the strongest third year student in the academy. According to rumors, Celestia hates boys. When the pervert attacks Lux, Celestia immediately stops him and Lux parries Celestia with a slash from the pervert, making Celestia feel very sympathetic towards this girl. At this time, in the Imperial prison, a mysterious man appears and kills Bowseride, and at the same time, rescues Regreed. Back at the academy, Celestia is currently questioning the headmistress about recruiting a male student into the academy when she wasn't here. Still the same solution, a match will be held on the island where everyone will be training soon. If Lux wins, he can stay at the academy, and most of all join the plan against the monster Ragnarok. If Lux loses, he will, of course, pack his bags and be kicked out of school. Sania is a student who has always shown respect for Celestia, and has also been opposed to Lux ever since he transferred to the academy. Students go to an island for a strength training session. When Lux sees the castle in the middle of the island, he is a bit surprised because he has been to this place before. The first day of training passed with fatigue of everyone. Celestia trains in such a strict manner that everyone can't breathe. Sania suddenly comes to Lux and says that there is an urgent matter that she wants him to follow her. Upon entering the room, Lux sees Celestia lying naked on the bed waiting for someone to give her a massage. However, Celestia still doesn't detect Lux until Lux finished the massaging. Celestia asks Lux to turn on the light so she can thank him kindly. Fortunately, Lux has brought women's clothes to disguise himself. Celestia expresses that she is very happy to see Lux and wants him to sit down and talk to her a bit more. Of course, Lux doesn't dare and immediately makes up an excuse to refuse. However, Celestia asks Lux to go out with her tomorrow. The next day, Lux wears a wig and fake breasts to hang out with Celestia. Celestia always forces herself to be strong and restrains herself. She reveals to Lux that she doesn't actually hate boys. She just doesn't know how to communicate with them. Celestia also reveals to Lux that Lux's grandfather taught her to give her the strength she is today. For that reason, she wants to challenge Lux to protect him from the dangerous monster Ragnarok. Then the match between Celestia and Lux takes place. Celestia summons her divine machine dragon, but Lux summons a normal machine dragon, not Bahamut. There are some members of the Night Order who still don't know about Bahamut, so Lux wants to keep this secret for as long as possible. Due to using a normal machine dragon, Lux is overwhelmed by Celestia. Lux tries to fend for a chance to counterattack, but when he lunges at Celestia, she uses her divine skill to teleport to another location. Suddenly, at this moment, a terrifying sound is heard, attracting everyone's attention. From below the arena's underground, giant tentacles pierce upwards, then charge towards Celestia. This monster is Ragnarok, which the royals fear. 
Cilicia is the strongest in the academy, so she decides to fight Ragnarok alone. She uses her divine skill to reach Ragnarok quickly, then delivers a blow to its mouth, knocking it to the ground. However, the constant use of her divine skill causes her to consume too much power. At this time, Sania appears, but no longer shows respect to Cilicia as before. Again, the sound of the flute sounds, and Ragnarok revives to their surprise. Lux looks towards the flute player and feels that the flute player is very similar to his brother. Sania lunges forward to kill Celestia, but Lux reacts in time to save her. Sania tells Lux that it was Celestia who killed Lux's grandfather. However, Lux still saves Celestia. After they got out of there, Celestia decided to tell Lux everything. As is known, Lux's grandfather taught Celestia from childhood until one day Celestia told Lux's grandfather about the wrongdoings of the old empire that she overheard. This led to Lux's grandfather being critical of the royals of the old empire. Then Lux's grandfather was imprisoned and died there. Although her grandfather always said that Celestia did the right thing, she still believes that she killed Lux's grandfather. Lux says Celestia is not at fault for that, and he confesses that he disguised himself as a girl. After seeing Lux draw his black sword and summon Bahamut, Celestia realizes he is the black hero. Lux represents his grandfather and is grateful for what Celestia has done and will definitely protect her. Lux charges towards the Ragnarok. On his way, he casually cuts off the arm of Sania's armor. Ragnarok has the ability to regenerate very quickly, so it is imperative that Lux use a special technique of his own creation called End Action. Ari says that Lux continuously sends commands into the Machine Dragon before it finishes executing his previous one, enabling him to execute an unlimited amount of consecutive attacks. After Ragnarok is destroyed, Sania immediately flies to its side and takes away a circular object. At this moment, the flute player takes off his hood. He is not Lux's brother. His name is Hayes. He is honored to meet the fake Prince Lux. He says he will reenact the nightmare five years ago that happened on the island. Lux tries to recall what happened at this place five years ago, but he can only recall vague memories. At this time, a loud noise sounds, and the whole island shakes. From the bottom of the sea, something huge is rising out of the water. The headmistress comes out and says it is a ruin, which is also the real purpose of this training session. Leisha and Irie have combined for Bahama a new feature called Overlimit. However, Leisha also warns Lux that this is an extremely dangerous skill. He could even lose his own life if he uses it. Everyone gathers to prepare to enter the ruin. This time, Philippi also joins the trip. Normally, the headmistress wouldn't let her sister participate because of her poor health. Philippi is always tired and can fall asleep at any time. During the exploration, they discover a robot girl inside the ruin. When Crucifer touches her, she suddenly says Crucifer is her administrator. She says her name is La Cruche, and she is the custodian of this ruin. However, she can't access her memory data right now, so she can't give them any information. La Cruche calls Crucifer an administrator, in addition to a person with greater authority called a creator. Philippi is getting more and more tired, so Lux tells her to go with him. Going further inside, they discover the place was used to create abysses. At this moment, Hayes is standing at some altar and playing the flute, much to Philosophy's discomfort. A Diablo appears and attacks them. After repelling it, Lux receives word from another group that two abysses have broken through the encirclement outside. Lux suggests that the headmistress should stop the investigation because the situation in the ruin was already out of control. But the headmistress says that no matter what happens, they must go to the last floor and look over her younger sister. Perhaps this decision of the headmistress has something to do with Philippi's condition. Philippi suddenly summons her machine dragon and rushes outside the ruin. Lux hurriedly chases after her. The two encounter the abyss on the island. Philippi is knocked into the building by the abyss. After slaying the abyss, Lux rushes in to find Philippi. When looking at this structure, a series of creepy images popped up in Lux's mind. It turns out this is where the old empire used to manufacture weapons by experimenting on humans. He had been here five years ago, but he remembers that Philippi wasn't there at the time. Lux sees Philippi sitting in a dark room. Suddenly, Philippi attacks Lux. She strangles and lifts Lux up, then she faints. At this moment, Hayes enters, and Lux points his sword at him. Hayes says that if he dies, Philippi will die like him because her body contains the seed of Ragnarok. The Bira of the Seed will gradually corrode until completely transformed into an abyss. Philippi always resists orders from the abyss inside her body, 
so she is always fatigued and has a high fever. Hayes makes a request to Lux. If Lux helps him open the ruin on this island, he will save Philippi. At this moment, Lux comes to the headmistress and says that he has remembered something. The headmistress says five years ago, after learning that Philippi was brought here for the experiments, it was Lux who came to rescue her, but by that time, Philippi was already dead. Then she suddenly woke up strangely. After some time, the headmistress realized that her sister was slowly turning into the abyss, so this time she wanted to explore the ruin at all costs. She hopes that relying on technology in the ruin can save Philippi's life. The next day, Lux's brother, Fugel, contacts Lux and tells him that if he wants to save Philippi, the only way is to break the flute and kill Hayes. They enter the ruin once more. Crucifer easily opens the door, making the headmistress also vaguely guess her identity. As soon as she steps inside the door, La Cruz says she is connected to the storage memory and learns of her mission. That is to destroy them all and not let anyone here escape. Hayes appears along with Philippi and orders her to attack everyone. Philippi's Divine Machine Dragon has the ability to temporarily disable other people's divine skills. Furthermore, it seems that the power of the Abyss is within her, making her a lot stronger. In Irie's hand is the flute that Irie had seized earlier. She tries to change Hayes' orders to Philippi and succeeds in making Philippi regain his senses. Hayes summons a Ragnarok, which looks like a monstrous tree. Its ability to regenerate very quickly and each generation will be stronger than before. Leisha, Lucifer, and Celestia team up to defeat it. Lux tells Leisha that he wants to use the Overlimit feature that she recently upgraded to Bahamut. Leisha doesn't want Lux to use this dangerous feature, but there is no other way. After enabling this feature, Lux easily defeats Ragnarok. Fugel appears besides Hades and tells him to retreat. Fugel says that he cannot defeat Lux in his overlimit state. After returning, Lux is injured and Philippi is fine as she is now able to resist the sound of the flute. Ari informs Lux that the strongest Dragon Knight who has previously served in the old empire has escaped from prison. Maybe that Dragon Knight's target will be Lux because Lux destroyed the old empire. After using Overlimit, Lux's body can now only endure 12 minutes when using Bahamut. While they were talking, a beautiful girl appears. She is Yoruka, the strongest Dragon Knight that Eri mentioned. She comes not to kill Lux but to follow him. She assumes that Lux enters this academy just to flirt with girls because with his current strength he can easily overthrow this empire if he wants to. Lux assures Yoruka that he has no such intention. Yoruka immediately turns around and attacks Lux. Fortunately, Celestia steps in to stop her. Leisha, Philippi, and Crucifer are also present. Yoruka summons her Divine Machine Dragon to fight them. Undoubtedly the strongest Dragon Knight of the Old Empire, she is able to control other Machine Dragons, causing the four of them to fight each other, after which she uses her invisible ability to escape. Lux and Ari are summoned to the Royal Conference. Here they are forced to become bait to lure 100 abysses hiding in a village to the place where the new Empire army will ambush them. They also receive news that the rebels of the old empire led by Regreed will attack the capital right after all dragons battle ceremony. Lux's current state can't take part in such a dangerous plan, so Ari vehemently protests, but the four royal families bring the case that the headmistress and the knight order had arbitrarily probed the ruins to threaten Lux. Not only that, but they also forced him to participate in the all dragons battle and forced him to win. In order to protect this harem, he accepts their request. Lux comes to Leisha and asks her to make him a machine dragon that looked like Bahamut. In the All Dragons battle, after defeating all the opponents and completing his part, Lux rushes to the village where 100 abysses are hiding, but an incident occurs in Leisha's match. During the match, her divine machine dragon suddenly loses control and shoots at the audience. Fortunately, there were no casualties. Crucifer instantly freezes Leisha's armor. Leisha is imprisoned for attacking citizens. Lux successfully lures 100 abysses to the army ambush. As planned, 100 abysses are shot to pieces. According to the information received, the army of the old empire will appear tomorrow, but right now they are appearing, making it impossible for the army of the new empire to react in time. Lux once again confronts Regreed. Regreed excitedly tells Lux about a disaster worse than Ragnarok, heading towards the capital. The ground shakes and in the distance Lux sees a super giant monster slowly approaching the capital. Regreed calls it the fifth ruin, the giant. Lux draws the third Bahamut sword that is prepared by Alicia beforehand. Regreed somehow knows that Lux has limited time to use Bahamut. 
After a while of fighting, Rugreed is able to cut off the arm of the fake armor. It is only then that he discovers that this armor is not Bahamut. Lux now uses the black sword to summon the real Bahamut. Lux quickly flies to the giant. The giant is equipped with state-of-the-art weapons. Inside are Hayes and Lacruche controlling it. Sania enters Leisha's cell and wants to strip her clothes to see the mark of the old empire. Of course, this is where Lux should appear. Outside, all the new empire's strongest people like Crucifer, Philophy, and Celestia are trying to hold the giant. Leisha arrives and uses her gravity manipulation skill to cause the giant to sink to the ground. However, it is not very effective. Lux and Leisha decide to combine their two machine dragons to create a combined attack. Crucifer and Philophy then join in to assist them in binding the giant. Lacruche informs Hayes that the giant will be unmovable for 10 minutes. Lux asks Crucifer and Philophy to deal with the abysses and the armies of the old empire in the city. He and Leisha will deal with the giant. Suddenly from nowhere, a powerful slash comes towards them, then cuts the city in two. Hayes first summons his divine machine dragon. Leisha will confront Hayes alone so that Lux can access the inside of the giant. However, he is stopped by Yoruka. She still tries to convince Lux about restoring the old empire, but Lux still refused. They fight each other fiercely until Lux reads the pause in Yorika's movements before he is able to defeat her. Lux tells Yorika that, as a royal, he also tried to change the old empire but failed, so he personally destroyed the old empire. Yorika is also surprised that he chose to destroy his country rather than protect it. But Yorika also understands that Lux fights for the people of the old empire. The giants can now operate again. A final destructive attack is being counted down to prepare to blow the capital away. Surprise in the giant's control room. Yoruka appears and disables Lacruche, causing the countdown to be cancelled. That makes Hayes extremely angry. He goes mad and attacks Leisha. After the impact, Leisha can no longer maintain her fully armed state. This time from behind, Lux unleashes a powerful slash towards Hayes, causing him to explode. During her speech to the public, Queen Leisha introduces the Dragon Knight Lux, who will serve her in the future. The Queen's speech receives a standing ovation from everyone. Then Lux sees his older brother Fugel also appear at the party. Fugel smiles and leaves. That wraps up this anime summary. I hope you guys enjoyed. And as usual, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more anime summaries in the future. Take care, everyone.